Sonic Forces is one of Sonic's most disappointing games and is widely regarded by many as one of the worst. However, what if I were to tell you that the game now has a sequel? Kinda, kind of. Boys and girls, this is Sonic Forces Overclock, a mod that makes various changes to the game such as new stages, various gameplay tweaks, and even adding a new story. And we're going to be talking about it all today. Before we get into this though, no, this is not Sonic Blast Season 3. I made a community post a while back saying that it was going to be postponed because Season 3 is going to be very different to what I usually do, so I want to take my time and get it right and get it to as good a quality as possible, but I still want to make Sonic videos and Sonic related content because you guys really seem to enjoy them and I enjoy making them. So I figured why not consider any Sonic video released between now and the actual start of Season 3 as sort of Sonic Blast 2.5 if you will. No Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> Enough of my nonsense. Let's jump into the damn game. Sonic Forces Overclock is a mod developed by Team Overclock with a fan made story that takes place after the defeat of Eggman at the end of Sonic Forces, focusing on Neo Metal Sonic and Infinite's return and their plan to take over the world by restoring the Phantom Ruby's power and overclocking it to make them both significantly stronger, and it's up to Sonic and Gadgets to put a pin in their plans before it can truly begin. With the help of members of the Resistance still around as well as some assistance from someone unexpected, they succeed in doing so and the group go off to continue rebuilding of the world. Yeah, that's the end. It's not a particularly long story. I mean, the story lasts for about an hour or an hour and a half, and with a total of nine stages for you to play through, including the one from Episode Metal, it's really not that long. It's also got full voice acting too, and it's pretty solid for what it is. The art for the cutscenes is gorgeous as well. Not a perfect story by any means, but no story is. Plus, the issues are so minor to me that I don't feel like talking about them. With one exception, because it affects more than one character, and that's the way some characters are written. Specifically in regards to Infinite and Sonic, because those two are very much written in a way that both does and doesn't fit their characters. Let me explain. Infinite is a character who talks a lot. He can come off as arrogant and fill himself because in his mind, he's unstoppable due to his power of the Phantom Ruby, but he never full-on monologues or straight up has a full-on sadistic speech about how much he enjoys beating characters up like he did in this mod with Sonic. The closest he ever gets to this is when he tells Sonic that he's going to kill him now that the Phantom Ruby was fully recharged during their final fight. There's a line between his arrogant, somewhat over-the-top speeches and his non-caring attitude, and him going on a full-on sadistic monologue. Sonic has this same issue. There's a line that a lot of people don't seem to grasp about his nature. He can be overconfident and somewhat smug. He jokes a lot, and he's also very competitive. But he's never outright full-on cocky. He's not the type who constantly make jokes to the point of not taking anything seriously. He's not overly confrontational. He only acts smug and overconfident in situations where he knows he can win. And there's a line between the two that a lot of people have a hard time navigating, even in official things like Sonic Prime. To better explain what I mean, I'm going to use Spider-Man as an example. One of Spider-Man's most iconic aspects is his jokey and quippy nature. He makes a lot of shitty jokes, often at the expense and chagrin of his enemies. But there's a line between Spider-Man being the annoying in-universe and him being a genuine annoyance because he does not know how to shut up. That is an issue a lot of writers have when writing Spider-Man. They have a hard time walking that line, and while I can't fault them on that end, it's a very thin line, the line you need to follow is clearer than fucking post-nut clarity, bro. It's that obvious, so it should be easy to know when you're veering into the wrong territory of him being a genuine annoyance to the audience. 2019, 2019, 2017, Spider-Man show, for example, has this issue in abundance because that version of Peter does not shut up. That's the gist of the issue, and act itself can be in character, but the degree to which it occurs can make it out of character. The good thing is, it's the only recurring issue I had with this mod, but everything else is fucking awesome, especially in regards to the stage selection. Stage selects is stage selection, which we're going to talk about right now. I mentioned earlier that the game only has 9 stages, those being Lost Citadel, Stolen Valley, Freight Frenzy, City Siege, Eclipse Forest, Jungle Inferno, Dead Atmosphere, Meteor Rush, and the final boss fight against Infinite and Neo Metal Sonic. All of which are very well made, and with all the tweaks made by Show to the physics, they control very smoothly and play very well. Though it is incredibly different, and it'll take a lot of getting used to. 
They also changed models for Sonic and Gadget, and they look very nice. The models for Forces in the base game were fine, but this one does look very good as well. The way they remixed the stages to not only make them longer, but also make them look pretty different was also very cool too, making use of the various elements of the original stages, altering them to make them somewhat new, like the Starlight Zone part at the beginning of Soul and Valley, basically the entirety of Freight Frenzy and Jungle Inferno, the part towards the beginning of Lost Citadel where you bounce off the destroyed ship in the background to the next area, and the background of the first phase of the, ne uh, the final boss fight with Infinite and Neo Metal, making use of Null Space in a cool way all come to mind for me. The stages are also filled with various alternate pathways for you to go through while you're playing, giving them a lot of replayability and places to explore. Another really cool aspect of this mod is the remixed music for the stages, especially the Avatar stages, which features both instrumental and vocal versions, the vocal renditions being sung by Sisconic, and they are pretty damn good. Take a listen. Oh, and that's not even mentioning the absolutely badass final boss team by Contagion and Zakujo. Just listen to this. That's all there really is that I can think to talk about for this mod though. I could do a whole thing of comparing it to base forces, but I've already shared my thoughts on base forces, so if you want to hear them, go watch that video after this one. I want to talk about this mod on its own, as its own thing, and as its own thing, it's really damn good. It's fun to play, has great music, looks gorgeous, has wonderful art, has a solid story with solid vocal performances, and while I don't think it's some absolutely perfect god tier level mod, overall I do think Sonic Forces Overclocked is fucking awesome. And I highly recommend trying this mod out for yourself. I'll leave a link to the mod in the top of the description, so please go download it for yourself if you have Sonic Forces on PC and give it a whirl, give it a play. You really will genuinely have a good time. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you all next video. Peace out and enjoy yourself.